Boom. All right, what's going on, you guys? It's Royce Jacob, and welcome back to Waves Weekly. This is a video series I post every weekend where I go over current events and recent news that occurred that I believe pertain to the markets and how I believe that that news will impact the market's performance next week, as well as what I'm planning on doing uh, with my personal portfolio and just as far as investing and trading is concerned. Um, all right, so as always, we'll go over the topics that we're going to discuss and then we'll dive into each one more individually, okay? So, um, as you can see here, we are opened up on the Moderna chart uh, covering the past week. So, we're going to start with the Moderna versus Inovio argument. Um, if you guys watched uh, my recent video that I just posted um, talking about Inovio and why I invested in Inovio, I, I did discuss some of this already. Um, in regard to Moderna versus Inovio and which one I like better. Uh, but I, I just want to go over that again real quick just to kind of discuss with you um, a little more of my thoughts on that uh, because they, again, are, uh, are my largest positions right now. And um, I think they're important to talk about, okay? Because I know a lot of you are invested in, in, um, in those two as well. All right, so we'll start with that. Um, so yeah, we got Moderna and Novio. Um, this is a Forbes article giving a very brief, um, very, very brief, little just take on Moderna versus Inovio. So we'll go over that too and see how that relates to, to what we're thinking. Um, and then I want to go into to, um, a little bit of Bitcoin, a little cryptocurrency talk, okay? Bloomberg just released an article this past week um, pretty much praising Bitcoin. So that's absolutely huge. So we'll get into that. Um, we'll look at this uh, very optimistic, but uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this chart uh, does play out or something similar to it. So we'll get into a fun little Bitcoin price chart. Um, and then we'll get into earnings. So this is just kind of a, a, a screenshot or close up I took of uh, Jim Cramer from MSNBC's video because I thought it, it was just a, it's just a good way to visualize the earnings that are gonna happen next week. I think the earnings, uh, as you can see here, a lot of these big companies that are announcing earnings next week are gonna be uh, very crucial to almost every market's performance going on. Just be, you got Apple, Amazon, Starbucks, um, so many big players. So next week earnings, I think are very, are going to be a very pivotal moment in um, the markets for the next few months. So I think that's going to be crucial. We'll talk, we'll talk about that. And then um, we'll go into, obviously I'm, I'm bearish. <laughs> I've been talking to you guys about how I'm bearish on um, traditional markets, S and P Dow Jones. This is a chart of the Dow Jones from a very macro perspective. So this dates back to 1915. And, um, I just want to talk to you guys. I know I've, I've, I've talked about it before. Like, um, I think specifically the spy I went over, but, um, I just want to talk to you guys about this just so you can see how, um, just to put a picture to, um, how it, it's not so crazy to see during times of, of true crisis and like true economic uh, hardship. It's not crazy to see drastic movements. And I just want to talk to you guys about um, what I'm seeing here and kind of what I personally believe will happen. Okay. So yeah, let's get into it. And then I actually, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little plug for this at the end. I just, I just created this course that follows my, um, my portfolio, my entire portfolio. I, I will update it every week. It's a complete breakdown of my entire portfolio, but we'll get into that at the end. I'm not going to, I'm not going to rant about that right now. All right. So Moderna versus Novio. All right. So again, this is Moderna tracking from right here was on Monday. So you can see Moderna spiked up heavy on Monday. It was looking super bullish going, um, going to even Tuesday pre-market it spiked up and then it had a huge crash down. Okay. So again, if you, if you guys are in this position, uh, which I imagine a, a decent amount of you are, um, you would know that it is scary, but, um, the good news is, is it recovered really quickly and then it stayed stable right around this $50 mark. So it's a very, and $50, a lot of those uh, round numbers, very strong psychological numbers. So that is promising that it's holding around $50. Again, this drop um, was at from $56 to $44. That's roughly, it was like a 15, 20% drop. So again, that was scary. Um, it didn't shake me out at all because that is to be, I mean, to be honest, that's to be expected when we get such crazy moves up like we have, you know, like, like that. So it's not crazy to see that. Uh, when I saw this, I was worried it would, it would uh, create a head and shoulders pattern, which is where you see here shoulder, head, and then it creates another shoulder, which, which then usually goes down to, to finish that pattern. But it didn't, it held strong, it held steady throughout the, throughout the uh, entirety of the week, which is good. And um, yeah, it closed. I, I want to show you guys this as far as the close is concerned. So we closed Friday with a strong move up, a lot of volume 
right before market close on Friday. So we got a we got a shitload of volume right as the market was closing, which in my mind is super bullish. So um, I would expect uh, a, a solid Monday, if not uh, a fairly stagnant Monday. I don't think it's going to crash on Monday. Just personally, I mean, as always, as you guys know, it very well could. I don't know. But just from um, kind of what I'm seeing, um, and the charts that I've looked at, I'm not gonna go super in depth on them right now, but um, I can't. I can't imagine, especially considering the primary factor is just the fact that it held so steady around this $50 mark. I, I don't think it's gonna. I I I, tr I personally cannot see it coming down. Um, coming down. To, especially like it did uh, right here. So I don't think it's going to crash down. You know, it might be a little like a, a percent or two up or down, but um, I'm still very bullish on Moderna. Uh, if you guys watched the video yesterday, again, I'm, I'm still holding strong in my position. So yeah, just keeping you guys posted on that. Um, so yeah, and, uh, Moderna had, I mean, you could almost call it a bad week. Definitely a bad week compared to Inovio, which is this chart right here. So this is, a, this is <laughs> on Monday. Uh, even on Monday, it had a great move up from from what eight dollars to to almost ten dollars in, in like a single day. So I mean that's a, a crazy good way to start the week. It it obviously has had a way more bullish um, week than Moderna. Uh, there's so much momentum behind it. It's kind of it it it's acting the same way Moderna did. You know when they released their first bit of good news. So it's kind of following in Moderna's footsteps. Okay, and what I want to talk about here is. Um, I mean, especially here, if you look at this volume, look at this change in volume, even from the beginning of the week when the price action, uh, when the price went up significantly, look how little volume that was compared to what we're seeing right now. Okay, so volume on Inovio is up. That means uh, general hype uh, around around the stock and the company is up. So that is very bullish in my mind. The more volume you see, especially when something continues to climb, uh, is good. Uh, volatility is good, you know, uh, because Inovio just had such a great week. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if next week we see almost something similar to what happened to Moderna this week. Okay, so I am, uh, I'm pretty confident that Inovio um, is gonna follow pretty closely. Obviously, not exactly the same, but pretty closely in Moderna's footsteps. So again, don't be, um, don't be shocked, don't panic sell if next week there is a significant drop, because. Um, Honestly, in my mind, these two companies have so much bullish momentum behind them. And on top of uh, what I assume are going to be shitty earnings calls and in, um, in guidance outlooks next week, I think these two companies specifically, along with some you know gold, silver, safe haven assets, um, will perform extraordinary well going into the next few weeks just because of yeah i i, I believe earnings are going to be shitty and we'll get into, we'll get into that in a little in a little bit okay so um yeah Inovio looks good i'm still holding strong on, my, on both my moderna and Inovio positions it's about a 50 50 um i'm kind of repeating again i'm gonna i'm gonna be repeating some of the stuff from the other video but i just wanted to talk about it with you guys um so again it's uh, my moderna to Inovio holding ratio is about 50 50 um yeah, it's like 50-50. It was prior prior to on prior to like Wednesday when I when I beefed up my position, it was like a 70-30, uh, Moderna being 70 and Novio being 30. But right now it's 50-50. Um, like like I was saying in the other video, I think it, it's honestly the safer way to play. Um, I'm happy with the with the profits I got out of uh, out of Moderna. But um, again, Moderna and Inovio both being the top primary candidates uh, as far as U.S. players are concerned. They're already in human clinical trials. They're um, they're releasing the most tangible, actual like uh, actual news. It's not just hype news. It's actual good news. Um, so I feel like they both have a lot of room to grow. We'll touch on the market cap again because I feel like that's uh, the most, almost the most crucial. Uh, factor that's the that's my key argument in my in my mind of why Novio could actually outperform um, Moderna just from an investment perspective um, is that Inovio's market cap so we'll go here um, you can see here where does it say I'll just read this out just because we're gonna get to this anyway Moderna plus 160 percent year-to-date return that's awesome has a right here like just just under a 17 billion dollar market cap uh, Moderna was the first to begin phase one clinical trials for its RNA based vaccine. The company is expected to receive as much as $483 million in U.S. federal government funding for its vaccine development. Moderna says that it could begin phase two trials as early as spring 2020, with phase three trials potentially starting as early as the fall. All right, so again, Moderna, Moderna still in my mind, the kingpin. Um, 
if I was personally to choose one, it would be Moderna. If I could only invest in one and hold it um, and not trade it, it would be Moderna just because, again, I, there are uh, mRNA-based met- methodology of how they're actually um, developing their vaccine is uh, is more revolutionary, more revolutionary. It's more tangible. I think it has more weight to it in my mind than um, Inovio's than Inovio's methods. Gr- granted, I did read up very briefly on Inovio's methods, but um, I'm just a big fan of the mRNA based vaccine and methodology that Moderna is using. So I am, uh, I do favor Moderna in my in my heart, but my mind is. Uh, has decided to go 50-50 on both of them. Okay, so Redder and Novio Pharmaceuticals up 250% year to date. So from a price perspective, already outperforming Moderna, um, has a $1.7 billion market cap. So it's at, I think after Friday's uh, pop, it's just over 2 billion. So I think that's, again, from the price action perspective, the market cap is the biggest deciding factor in um, in my mind, and the biggest argument for Inovio as, a, as strictly an investment, that it has a way smaller market cap. So that means that the price per share can go way higher with way less capital um, pumped into it. Okay, just, just uh, that's just common logic. The smaller the market cap, the um, the more that inflowing capital will rise the share price, will will boost the share price. Okay, so that's uh, that is my biggest argument for Inovio. That is um, the primary driver behind why I did make a 50-50 position of the two. Um, and they did release that good news, right? They release uh, their CEO was on um, was on CNBC. He was talking to Kramer, who's saying that uh, they're expecting a potential vaccine if all if all human clinical trials go well over the next 12 to 18 months. Very bullish. Uh, that is the news that led um, in my mind, and I'm pretty positive that was it to uh, Inovio popping off on Friday. So, yeah. Again, uh, to ra- to wrap this up, kind of, I did. I did talk about it in in my last video, so I don't want to just ramble on too long about this. Um, If you guys want to talk more about this, feel free to drop a comment and I'll answer any questions you might have. Um, But yeah, I do do prefer Moderna. I think, uh, I personally think Moderna will come on top. We never know. Um, None of us know. Uh, even even these guys don't know, but again, another another good reason to, to just 50-50 that investment is the fact that if one of them does come up with a vaccine prior to the other one, the other one, um, so say Moderna comes comes upon a vaccine first, um, Inovio stock is likely to tank because uh, Moderna got it first, and and vice versa. If Inovio gets it first, Moderna is likely to tank. So it's almost a, they're almost hedges against each other, although they are playing the same game. But um, again, these like the realistic news unless one of them completely flops uh human clinical trials um kind of like gilly did um, unless that happens then i think both uh both will continue to rise over the next few weeks just because um yeah news news in this in this regard is pretty slow in the grand scheme of things so um, i think it has a lot of room to grow prior to any news at all coming out just because there's so much hype and um and emotion behind it right now which is uh, historically a very key driver of price action. Okay. So, uh, yeah, to wrap that up, Moderna and Inovio positions holding on tight to those. And, uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys posted with, uh, with all the activity that I, 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 um, I just see around those and what I plan on doing, um, over the coming weeks. All right. So moving on Bloomberg, Bitcoin is, uh, sorry, Bloomberg colon. So Bloomberg just this past week released a full report talking about how Bitcoin is is gold 2.0, how Bitcoin is almost a better gold and how it is setting up for a 2017 like bull run. Okay, so that's huge. A publication um, as as well as as well regarded and um, as as praised as Bloomberg, um, especially a traditional like they're they're an OG like Bloomberg is a very well respected even among almost all investors of of every magnitude. And the fact that they released um, such a bullish report on Bitcoin is is very bullish for the space as a whole. It turns a lot on a lot of new new faces and new investors to Bitcoin. Um, so that's very crucial. That's very important in just um, overall adoption as well. And obviously, with adoption of um, of revolutionary assets like this comes price action. OK, so the more adoption, the, the higher the price is going to go, the more exposure, the more people are learning about it uh, just as a <laughs> as a as a fact of that or as a um, you know, you know, as it, the, the correlation is, is one to one with the more people that know about Bitcoin and are educating themselves on it uh, as the price action. OK, so the more people know, the, the more people learn, the more the price goes up. Jeez. 
Okay, so I'll just read some of this. A recent Bloomberg report states that Bitcoin BTC is preparing for a massive bull run. Even the report's name is bullish. Uh, so the title of the report is Bitcoin Maturation Leap. The report mentions a number of reasons that the Bitcoin market is maturing, and that is due to do, that is that it is due for a bull run. It also affirms that Bitcoin is gaining relative fuel as stocks reset. If history is a guide, so this is the biggest. Um, like this is huge. The fact that they said this, and I did mention this previously, and I think I'm even going to make a video about this uh, sometime in the near future, and that is Bitcoin becoming digital gold. Okay, so um, again, I. I have mentioned this in some of my previous Bitcoin videos, but I, th I truly do think Bitcoin is gold 2.0, and that's probably what I'll title the video that I make in regards to um, why I believe Bitcoin is better than gold and how it's just the next evolution of gold. Um, furthermore, Bloomberg says that Bitcoin and gold both considered hedge assets are expected to win the most from the recent COVID-19 influence market turmoil. So again, Bloomberg saying this is there's so much weight to Bloomberg's words, to be honest. So um yeah, no, that's, that's huge. Just the fact overall, that's kind of the main thing that I wanted to just uh, reiterate and going over this. You, I think you guys all know that I'm bullish on Bitcoin, but the fact that uh, Bloomberg, again, such a, such a highly regarded publication is so bullish on it is, uh, is huge. It's huge for Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market as a whole. So in this quote from the report, it says, Bitcoin and gold also stand to be primary beneficiaries of the unprecedented monetary stimulus that's accompanied by a mean reverting stock market. Okay, so what they're pretty much saying there is, um, you know, what I've been saying, uh, the, the trillions of dollars that's being, being injected into the economy, um, although it may, it may not be seen right now, um, over time, it will lead to a devalued dollar just because they're literally printing money. The more you print, the, the less value your the dollar that's in your pocket currently has uh, okay that's just uh, common i mean common sense right there so it also <clears throat> excuse me it also observes that bitcoin's correlation to gold has increased to all-time highs concluding i quote this year will confirm bitcoin's transition from a risk on speculative asset to the crypto markets version of gold the report reiterates that 2020 will be the year when Bitcoin becomes digital gold. Quote, this year marks a key test for Bitcoin's transition towards a quasi-currency like gold, and we expect it to pass. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll cut that there. You guys can go read the Bloomberg article if you want, or this um, this uh, Cointelegraph. They did a really good job of kind of summarizing it. So you guys can see the title here. It's a Cointelegraph article. Go check out the full thing if you guys want to. But we'll wrap that up there. Again, uh, so bullish on Bitcoin right now. The halving is coming up on... Um, in less than a month in early, in early to mid May, it's supposed to happen. Uh, I made a video that did super shitty on that. So if you guys want to educate yourself on that, I'd appreciate it. If uh, you made that video, not a complete waste of my time. because I got like no views on that thing, but um, yeah, go check it out. I thought it was a solid video. I, d I just broke down what the Bitcoin having is and why it's so important and um, bullish for Bitcoin as an asset. So go check that out if you want, but that's coming up next month. That's huge. There's just so much bullish momentum behind Bitcoin right now. And um, yeah, it's one of my, if you guys don't know, it's one of my largest single positions. So I'm super long Bitcoin, um, super bullish on it. So go, go do more research on that if you would like. Um, this was, again, um, as, you, as you guys saw in the beginning, briefly, uh, this is a chart that uh, I, I love this. I, I always reference this guy's stuff. I think he has a super unique take. Um, obviously very bullish and optimistic take in this in, uh, in this case, but it's Bitfink on TradingView. If you guys do have TradingView, go check him out. I think he publishes very, um, very solid work. Uh, but this is pretty much uh, just make it, he made a fractal pattern of, of what could potentially happen in Bitcoin right now. There's some trend lines here. Um, I didn't read too much. I, I mean, I'm not gonna go into that that piece of it but a fractal so he just cut out this piece from um from may so this is like may 19th that's like my birthday so he cut it out from there from may 19th to june so that's you know like about just about over a month month and a half um cut that out and just pasted it to right here just because the prior so you, as you can see here that price action kind of reflects that price action but I think I think fractals are one of the most uh, one of the single most telling, um, almost technical. It's it's I would almost call fractals more te fundamental analysis than technical analysis. Honestly, I know it involves charts, but again, you're just looking at market psychology. That's what charts show. Like chart and price actions uh, are a good reflection of market psychology when something significant happens. Okay, so.
again, it wouldn't be surprising to me, especially with, again, the having coming out these Bloomberg reports, so many more people being uh, um, interested in financial education and just turned on to, to kind of the um, what's going on with money. You know, people are becoming more interested in their finances and their um, financial well-being. They're becoming more educated. They have time at home. They're learning. Um, so again, with with people with more people being turned on to Bitcoin, with the having coming up soon, I would not be surprised at all to see it repeat a fractal similar to this, where it's super bullish, just super quick. Um, so yeah, again, this could very well not happen too. I'll just give you a projection. This projects that it's gonna hit, uh, it's gonna pass like fourteen thousand um, dollars on June fourth. So, you know, you guys always, as always, just do your own research, look into it. Um, I just want to show you this just because it's fun to. Um, it's just fun to look at this stuff sometimes. It keeps you bullish, keeps you um, on path, on, on good paths. So it's good to stay optimistic, you guys, with things that you're truly optimistic long-term on. Um, again, it could it could crash as well. I don't know, but I am way more bullish than I am bearish on Bitcoin. So we'll cut it there. <laughs> Stop ranting about Bitcoin. All right. So this is what I believe um, is going to be the most crucial almost uh, most crucial factor in how the markets perform over the next few months is next week's earnings. Okay. So I've been waiting for these earnings for, for a long time. If you guys, I think in the episode, um, in the waves weekly, two weeks ago, I was talking about, uh, Apple's potential earnings and how they, they, so the majority of companies in the S and P 500, almost all companies across the board pushed their earnings calls back because they were just so shitty. So, they're so shitty. They cut guidance. Apple announced Apple and bo- both Apple and Starbucks announced that they're completely wiping guidance, which is um, kind of how you expect your, co- your your company and your business to perform over the over the coming months, over the coming quarters. So they completely wiped those just because they already know 2020 is pretty much a, a clean. They're just disregarding all of 2020 for the most part. So that's terrible. And the market is still up. Obviously, the market's up because the, the Fed is injecting a shitload of money to these hedge funds. And a lot of these whales are just propping up the market artificially right now. Um, but I think a lot of retail investors are falling prey to the fact that uh, the market is potentially uh, performing or executing a V-shaped recovery, which, um, again, I, I reiterated over and over again. I keep saying that I'm, very, I'm bearish. Over, over the coming months and even um, the coming years on traditional markets, equities, S&P 500, Dow Jones. Um, I think a lot of retail investors are like, oh shit, this is the, de- this is that, uh, no, 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 the, the ones who know think it's a dead cat bounce, but um, the ones who don't, I think a lot of people still are optimistic and thinking that we're just gonna reopen and the economy is gonna be, be back to normal and uh, the market's absolutely killing it. So, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, again, there are factors like like these whales and hedge funds propping up the market, which um, I also want to say that the economy and the market are very different things. Uh, as we can see right now, just because the economy is in absolute shambles doesn't mean that the market is going to be in shambles either um, for the reasons that I kind of just mentioned. But eventually, um, in my opinion, the, uh, the these large funds and the Fed uh, injecting trillions of dollars into the economy cannot prop up the markets forever. Um, again, maybe it can, I don't know. It just doesn't make any, any, um, any sense or I, I can't rationalize how that can, that is a sustainable thing and that has any longevity to it. So, um, I do think that after this earnings, after, uh, these earnings calls next week and, um, we're, we're companies that maybe some people even like, like we'll go over some of these right now. Okay. So Apple, Amazon, um, AMD is a stock that um, I am currently shorting. Um, that's a good example. I'll go into that of just how, how people have such high expectations for earnings. So like AMD is a good example and I'll explain to you guys why I'm shorting that currently. So AMD, uh, what they they almost monopolize the, um, the microprocessor microchip space along with um, like NVIDIA and microchip technology. They're one of very few players in the space. They're killing it. Um, they're doing good. And I think a lot of people are like, oh shit, everyone's at home. They're all buying laptops. They're all buying things. And maybe that's true. Um, I honestly can't believe that those numbers are, um, are as high as some, some of these analysts may be expecting. Um, I know they have, yeah, they have the graphics hard. They have, they have like cloud businesses. They have, um, they're, they're very, I mean, I, I'm very long, long AMD 
over like a 10 year period. I think over the next five to 10 years, AMD is gonna absolutely kill it. But um, I did mention this in a previous video where I talked about shorting AMD. AMD has a PE ratio, which is price per share to earnings ratio of like 170, which is ridiculous right now. Their earnings per share are, um, they're almost, they're nearly unprofitable. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if over the course of the coming year, they have like, even if they do have this small spike in revenue from people maybe buying um, iPads or just, just any, any like tablets or, or computers and shit, um, even if they do st see a spike in revenue, I think they will cut guidance. Um, we just saw Intel cut guidance. Uh, they are being clouded by the react, like Intel is a good, is a good um, kind of comparison to AMD as far as like just chip, chip makers are concerned. So uh, although Intel saw a spike again in, in tablet and computer purchases, um, their guidance is awful. They, they admitted that they had awful guidance. And I think a lot of people, um, my primary point with AMD is I think a lot of people are overly optimistic on it. And um, I think the earnings call next week when they announce earnings on the 28th, I believe, will, um, will cut a lot of the optimism out of the market. And, and that goes for almost all the companies on here. Aside from Amazon, um, 3M obviously killing it. I haven't looked at 3M stock, but they do make the, the N95 masks. So they're probably on fire. Pepsi, uh, I don't know, Pepsi, Starbucks. I'm, I'm shorting Starbucks right now. Um, I do think Starbucks is overvalued. The fundamental, like, people are buying so much less Starbucks than they have been. No one's going out. No one's at home. You always want a Starbucks before you go to work. Um, Starbucks is a very before work kind of thing. And no one's going to work. So Starbucks fundamentally is hurting my mind. I am shorting Starbucks. Um, Alphabet, Google, ad revenues down. Um, I can't see Google having a good um, a good, or, good earnings or a good outlook. Um, GE is uh, trash. I would never touch GE. Facebook, I guess, kind of same, uh, same principle as Google's. Ad revenue is significantly down across the board. Uh, Microsoft, I don't know. I mean, they're probably selling some of these tablets and stuff. Microsoft is, I'm, I'm neutral on Microsoft. Apple, I still think Apple's overvalued. Um, it's still up like over 100% on the year. So I think, I, I mean, I love Apple. I have Apple everything. I have an iPhone, AirPods, uh, this MacBook that I'm recording on right now. I love Apple as a brand, but I think it's overvalued. Same as AMD and Tesla. Like these shorts that I have right now, I think the market is just way overly optimistic on these. And I think that... Um, that they will fall when they announce earnings next week. Always remember you guys, this is not direct financial or investment advice. I can't legally give that to you. This is just my take. And I think the market is uh, propped up and overly optimistic right now. And I think these are, again, these earnings will reflect that next week. So you guys just, uh, again, oh, as always do your own research. You guys can look into these if you're interested in uh, any of these individually, you wanna play, uh, if you wanna play any of these earnings calls. Um, so yeah, just let me know kind of what, what you're thinking on here and if, if you think that I'm full of shit with the AMD thing because I have, I, I definitely get the argument for AMD, for Tesla. Again, I'm, I'm super bullish on these long term. I just think they're currently overvalued. So let me know what you guys think about this. Um, always love to talk, even if you're, even if you're talking shit. Like, I love, like, constructive criticism, you know, just don't, don't be a dick. But uh, if you want to have a constructive talk about some of these, just let me know. Um, all right, we'll go into this. Uh, this just, just kind of to cap off the bearish, I went over this a pretty decent amount um, at the beginning, but this is the Dow Jones. And as you can see here, this is uh, dating back over like over a hundred years. Okay. So as you can see here, this was, um, this was the great depression that happened right here. Um, it had the same thing. I, I don't know here. I'll try to zoom in right there. So, oh, God damn it. All right. So you can see how it had that initial tank, like what we just saw. And then it had that dead cat bounce right here which is what we're currently experiencing right now and then it went down for three years for the most part obviously it had more of these bounces back up um every market's going to be like that it's not just going to be a straight shot down obviously um but it trended down for three years after that initial drop and after the dead cat bounce so after this dead cat bounce from um call it april 1930 to july 1932 so for like two years two and a half three years it trended downwards and i think that's going to be similar to what happens now um again it times are times everything happens faster now everything is at the touch of uh, at the 
you know, at, at your fingertips, on your phone. Everything's faster. Technology's made everything faster. Communication, social, every everything's faster. So I wouldn't be surprised if um, if the trail down is faster. I don't think it's going to be this significant, to be honest. Um, but what I will say, because uh, I've already rambled on enough in this video, and I'm going to kind of wrap it up. Um, it's something that I've said, I've been saying since we had this initial crash, which is I think by the end of this, we will see at the very least a 50% retracement. So the Dow at its high um, in what, January, February was at about $30,000. You'd see here, uh, if we came back to this previous high in, um, what was that, 2008, prior to that, uh, prior to that second correction, we had like almost a double top here in uh, 2000, 2008. So this is just about $15,000. Again, a 50% correction um a 50 percent retracement from previous highs historically is no nothing crazy at all that's happened many times in history so i would not be surprised if we saw it go from thirty thousand to fifteen thousand. again it could it, it i think it'll be personally shorter um it won't last for like three years like the great depression did it could last for just a year but i think um prior to to, uh, to entering another bull market as far as uh tr s p dow jones are concerned i do think that they will both have 50 percent retracements prior to starting their new bull markets and then they'll will reach previous highs the, like this is gonna go up uh for as long as humankind is around so i do want to uh i do want to get that point across i am bullish i am long uh the human race i just think that the market is inflated right now and it has a further way down to go okay so that's my thoughts on that um We'll get into this, you guys, because I did just create this. I created this. I, I've been um, kind of working on this. Um, just it's, it's been in my mind for a while, and I've been working on it for the past, I would say, like, month now. But this is my new uh, portfolio course. So it's not, it's not necessarily a course, but what it is is it's a complete breakdown of my entire portfolio. So options, um, call options, put options, uh, some of the, my stock positions, my cryptocurrency holdings. Um, it's a complete breakdown. Um, I segment it into, into like call options, put options, cryptocurrencies, uh, how much the percentage of my entire portfolio that they are, and then um, each exact position. So with the, with the call options, it would be the stock, the ticker symbol, the, um, the call, the specific price, price target and the expiration date so it's very specific um yeah it's just it's literally what exactly what it says right there it's my complete portfolio um i will update it every weekend i don't um i don't know if you guys know this but i'm not like a day trader i don't day trade stocks i don't sit and look at charts and then and, and trade um i'm a swing trader i consider myself a swing trader so i swing like trends i'll only uh, i'll only change my positions uh once maybe twice a week all right, so I hold positions for a couple weeks at a time. Um, I find I just that's my personal style. If you are a day trader, great, but um, I find it a lot less stressful and um, just more chill. And like it makes me, it allows me to focus on on kind of the macro fundamental picture as opposed to um, the price action uh, strictly. You know, like the the day the day to day moves aren't as important to me as what I see the potential. Um, movement over the course of the over weeks or months are concerned okay so i will update this every weekend um so yeah, you like a lot of you guys i know a lot of you guys ask me uh, about other what my other positions are or what um just what other interesting things or what other interests of mine in my portfolio are and obviously my interests reflect my portfolio so i decided to make this it's 15 dollars a month um you guys can check it out if you want and always just unsubscribe if you think it's shitty um I think it's solid. Um, obviously, I made it, so I think it's solid, and I do think it's a good product. Um, you guys, like, we're all capitalists here. I'm sure you guys can respect this. Um, I'm not just selling out, or I'm not just selling this just to fucking make money. I'm selling it to make money because we're all capitalists. We're all investors, you know. Like, we're all in this game to to make some money. And I make I make these courses because I genuinely think that they can help people, and that it is it is beneficial information. Um, that said, this is not direct financial or investment advice. I cannot legally, as I said prior, give um, direct financial or, uh, or investment advice. But I do believe that, um, again, it's a pretty stacked portfolio. There's probably like, uh, what is it? There's probably like 30 or 40 positions that I currently have right now. So um, it's too much to just go through on the YouTube channel. And again, I do want to monetize this in some way. I'm putting a lot of time and work into this YouTube channel. And um, again, I really appreciate you guys watching. But it's, I feel like it's just a smart move um, 
just as an entrepreneur to to create courses like this okay so i hope you guys can understand that um if you guys don't engage in these at all that's uh, i it's no big uh no worries on you guys i just appreciate you guys having it around it's just an option if you want to support the channel if you want to support me if you want to get um some insight most most importantly to what i'm doing um yeah go check that out uh, the link will be down below um, and it's also in my YouTube, uh, in like the YouTube header thing. It's like the little, um, money sign emoji. So that's a link to my course as well. Um, it'll be easier cause I'll just link it down in the description. So that's a lot easier to check out. But yeah, check it out if you're interested at all. Um, along with just these updates, you will get, uh, my email and a direct line of access to me and i am obligated i'm obligating myself to answer any questions that um anyone who orders either of these courses has okay so along with the actual content you have a direct line of access to me okay so i appreciate it if you guys check that out um it's a good way to support the channel and get some good uh, solid content in my opinion out of it as well okay so as always well, uh i appreciate you guys for watching we'll just wrap it up there uh, finish that plug um I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I truly do appreciate it. Like, I'm super stoked on the community we're, we're building here. And it's, uh, it's cool. So appreciate you guys watching. Um, also appreciate it if you like and subscribe as well. You know, it's forgetting something. So, yeah, appreciate you guys. Always remember, make waves in these markets. Until next time, peace. Peace.